she be handy when you're doing a line? She will be there a fraction early as the one the white cap jig is now breaks forward. That is well, he is no book. to do that a little bit. He can be hard on the way to the start as well with Conor Bradley on board. Um, in the yellow cap actually is fire attack. He's the far side the near side rail. They're ready to go, Richard. They're racing. The top pro wave plate is underway. Over two miles and six furlongs, and no cook is one of the first to show with Anna Mick and Hewitt. Going to the near side, fire attack now. It's going to go straight to the lead. So it's fire attack to go down into the dip, and it's fire attack. It's going to leap him down from no cook in second. Hewitt, who won the big one in second, and the Jordan game for the green third. Easy games to the inside under Jack Foley. He's won his last four. Gina Lyme is just inside this one. Right in behind these is Ella Barra, Paul Talley in the first to Rishi Silks, right down the inside and it makes the grey in the second Rishi Silks is just outside of Ashtree Meadow, the shunter is wide for light, to Lasso's further back with battle over the end, Castle Grace, the outside good to see up uh, and no problem for Shane for Sharon, as they make their way now towards the fence before they turn down the hill, Hewick they won the big one, but Sandown and Jordan Gainford in front, with a 12,000 feature winner yesterday, this fella cost 850, he couldn't show any Ashtree Meadows towards the outside, Cape Gentleman is there, Gin on line, battle over Dorian runs a big one, Alpara is next. They're being chased down by Gabby Knackle, who's moved. Now it's the run to home. Gabby Knackle has gone. He'll be winning badly. Hand for Adam, he was out of it. It's Hewitt up the hill from Ashtree Meadow. They're being hunted down now by Alpara, who's getting right into a Cape Gentleman to Ross around the outside. They turn for home in the plate. Hewitt comes on to the lead. Ashtree Meadow shuffled up with the right, and his horse has to come wide. Alpara went up to the same. Hewitt turns tight to home. Has the advantage from its second. Alpara back then is Ashtree Meadow. Half Gentleman is next. And they're falling by Tommaso, but inside the closing stage of the right of his horse, it's coming right across Hewitt, he might cost him the fight, on the near side, Tommaso's coming back at him, and Tommaso on the near side, the luckless Hewitt has got back on the far side, and it won't be beat, Hewitt has won the place from Tommaso, back in third was that bow, and they were followed in by Ashley Meadow, back over here, and it's only run a cracker to get there. Next in front of the shunter, gentlemen, the jam man, easy game. This is the second last, and I wasn't sure if we were coming out and there was a loose horses, and I had to come in a bit earlier in case they brought me out, you know. And uh, you know, geez, it went off fast, and I thought I might be fine up the hill after, after using that much, but he jumped so well the whole way. He got his ground here today. Thought about straight my way, initial row wasn't this unbelievable. Fair training performance. A day come through, I'm sure, to win it all in play. So, so special, but this has been a great horse for you. Yeah, unbelievable hand. Fair play to Gary Crippen. He got me on him in Listowel last year. He's a massive, he's a massive job for me, and uh, a lot of lads in the wear room, and. Uh, yeah, he won in the stall and he went on, then I went on in Sandown, that was, that was massive. Um, but Gene, the fair fit training performance, he, he ran a bad row, I think, two and a half months ago now, and come back here for this, it's, it's one hell of a race. Absolutely, it sure is, it's a race that's steeped in history and I'm sure you're delighted to win it. But talk us through it, were you happy everywhere, jump super? Yeah, jump super, uh, Beforehand, like he does with plenty of his horses, but he knew what he had at home, and it was Hewitt. And by God, he delivered here today, and a fine ride by Jordan. He's such a nice fella. You know, I, I can't give him enough praise. He, he's just so nice to work with. He's so, he puts a smile on your face when you see him in the morning. And I know if his mom and dad aren't here today, they'd be very proud sitting at home watching him. Oh, there's Jack Hamlin. The train's just, be, just outside Paul's town between the Royal Oak and Gorse Bridge, actually. He's a great fella, he's a great character. Um, I spoke to him earlier on, and as, as Jane and Lisa said, you know, he fancied me to hot this horse to win. And a lot of people question him coming back in trip because he had no form really below two miles, because Barron now was hurt, or below three miles, should I say. But to drop him back up to three, five, and stand out to win, what is a sharp race here? You need a lot of pace generally for the place. And it was just such a good performance by him, but full two from McDonald family, family, I presume. There's a good few people there, so it's been well celebrated and well enjoyed. So, big, big result for connections. Massive result. Quite horse. He is a quiet horse. He might only be seven, but he is most certainly a quiet horse. What a jumper. And Barry, where, where can he go? I mean, he's a pace to win a cobble play, the stamina to win. Well, we would call it whip play, but it's probably something else now. But, um, where could he end up? I'm nearly sure that's the shark's mother as well on the right. John, I think his dad's name is Mr. or Mrs. Handel, and I would have called him anyway. So we'll stick with that. Yeah, I mean, this is a horse potential because this it was um, Conti's past finished sixth in it. Generally, he didn't, he didn't see it out, but it was a different race back then.
All great scenes there now. The Shark Cannon will be good value for his interview whenever Brian Gleeson can get a hold of him. But Huey, thousands of people want to shake your hand. What a training performance. Ah, uh, listen, just great. He's a, he's a great horse. He's, he's a very easy horse to train. He don't take a lot of galloping. And when you don't have to gallop, you can keep him sound. And uh, just, just great. I'm great for the team at home because um, he's our star. And it's an emotional shock, isn't it? Ah, it is. Ah, it is. To win this, we're coming here on my life. And to win this race, you always want to win it. This one, the Kerry and Arsene, I bought him one. So, uh, we're, we'll, and we'll head back to Kerry again with him, I'd say. But listen, forever at home is great. My mother and father are here today. They have been racing for two years. So, um, it's just great for everyone. And, um, it's hard to explain. He got a great ride. He, gave me, he knew the horse. I'm fair juice to garden. He gave me the chap. Um, he could have said, no, you have to ride this or ride that. And he said, your horse is a chance and he can have So I have to thank Gordon the lead as well. You just spoke home about this horse, but you, you have a habit of, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands by going to, to the shark. No, he came from Gorsebridge, the sales in Gorsebridge, for 800 quid. He's 100 euros. 800 euros the horse cost. And, um, tell us, how did you pick him out? Or how, what, tell us the, the, back, the back story. He was, he was a lovely walking horse. Paddy Mullins years ago said to me, if a horse can't walk, he can't run. And he was just a lovely walking horse. I went to the sales to buy another horse, and I met this horse coming in the back gate. And I just looked at him walking, and I went home, because I'm only five minutes from the sales company. And um, I was getting a bit of grub at home, and I was thinking about the horse, and I went back down the bottom. And it was just a dream from there. He was unlucky in his pint to pint, thanks be to God, because if he had to be lucky, he'd been sold. Because he's not fast enough for it. In stand down, they can go back and look at the video. From the first furlong, they were doing 33 miles an hour. Right? I guarantee you they weren't doing 33 miles an hour. And I knew he'd have enough toe to be up there. And at that, that race, you have to be up there and have a trouble. Because if you're not, you're in trouble. I knew he'd stay all day. When I said to Gordon before he got one of them, I said, if you're four lengths behind him at the dip, you'll win five. That's all I said. So, um, everything went to plan, and that's most important. And because the dream it, it continues, because you know people here are saying, this could be a grand national horse. He's won the Met 365, what everyone knew was the whip at three miles and five furlongs. He's got speed and stamp. Yeah, we, we go to the Kerry and Aston first, though. The plan was... Oh, the, the Monty's pass route. We, we, we won the Kerry and Aston when I was started with a uh, horse called Alpha Beat. And from here, there's only one thing in my mind, I want to win it again.